Hello again. So at a national and subnational level, the options for additional financing include vehicle quotas, license plate auctions, vehicle taxation, and fuel pricing. License plate auctioning is a source of additional revenue and also a means to limit the number of vehicles on the streets. Shanghai in China has implemented the license plate auctioning system where about every month about 10,000 license plates are auctioned for traditional fuel vehicles, that is either a diesel or a petrol uh, or vehicle. Low emission or new energy vehicles or NEVs get a special number plate for free and they can only be used for the vehicle people buy and not transferred to new vehicles. The traditional fuel number plate, however, can be used on any vehicle and though almost no one would use them on an NEV for obvious reasons. In April 2022, the cost of a number plate in Shanghai was about 14,200 US dollars and there were about 183,000 bidders for the 10,000 number plates that are available. In addition to uh, number plate auctioning, the next stage is uh, ve in vehicle pricing is to increase the total cost of owning a vehicle. And Singapore implements such a vehicle taxation system. The city country implements this scheme to deter more vehicles on the streets and also manage the available resources for its transport infrastructure. So in Singapore, purchasing a new vehicle means the vehicle has to be imported from other countries. And this attracts a customs duty depending on the kind of the vehicle. This sum is the open market value or the OMV. Think of this as the sticker price of the car. On top of the OMV come the registration fees, which are about 220 Singaporean dollars. And an additional registration fee is applied based on the assessed OMV. The additional registration fee or the ARF is applied in slabs of 100%, 140%, 180%, and 220% of the OMV. Apart from that, there is also a need for a certificate of entitlement, which is bid upon. To register a vehicle, a COE or a certificate of entitlement is required. The COEs are limited and the transport authority invites bids, which are released twice every month. In April 22, which was the second bidding process, uh, the amount of COE for a car in category A, that is up to 1600 uh, CC, was about 68,700 Singaporean dollars. So once the COE is obtained, the registration is valid for 10 years. After 10 years, the car can be uh, either deregistered or a new COE can be obtained by paying a prevailing quote premium, which stands at about 67,600 Singapore dollars in April 22 for the category A vehicle. So in gist, in Singapore, owning a car would cost anywhere between three to five times the sticker price. And once you won, uh, once you own a car, you will have to pay the regular maintenance cost, the parking fees, which are not cheap, and buying a used car might get some money off, but then come the emission uh, scheme charges where there is either a bonus or a malus of up to 27,000 Singaporean dollars, depending on the emission category of the vehicle. And you may have heard of the electronic road pricing scheme, which is very similar uh, to the congestion pricing scheme that we saw in the earlier video. But in Singapore, all streets uh, charge the automobiles for, uh, for uh, the uh, uh, charge a fee. And this fee is uh, variable the, throughout the day. 
and it reflects the levels of congestion on the streets. The revenue is then used to promote sustainable transport, that is public transport system, uh, the maintenance of the electronic road pricing scheme, and also promote walking and cycling. Though the system's main, or though the ERP's main purpose is not to generate revenue, but to manage uh, traffic on the streets, it is a source of additional revenue that can be used for promoting sustainable transport in Singapore. On the other side of the world, Netherlands adopts a taxation based on vehicle emissions. Higher the vehicle emits, higher is the tax applied. And this tax is called BPM in short. So for example, having a petrol car that emits say 145 grams of CO2 per kilometer, the tax paid would be about 7,000 euros. Similarly, for diesel cars, the rate is about 87 euros per gram. So a diesel car with 200 grams of CO2 emissions per kilometer would be paying about 11,000 euros in BPM tax. For hybrid vehicles and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles though, there is also a taxation, but it is a lot less than conventional cars. So in effect, only fully electric vehicles are exempt from the BPM tax. Fuel is also taxed in many countries. This figure shows the result of comprehensive data collection on fuel prices in various countries. The data is collected by the GIZ or the German Development Corporation as a part of their International Fuel Prices Initiative. And this figure is from their 2019 publication of the International Fuel Prices. The first category or the countries in, in this picture are divided into four categories. The first category is the countries with very high fuel subsidies, like in Venezuela, where petrol costs uh, about two euro cents per liter, or in Iran, where fuel price is about five euro cents per liter. The second category is the countries where there is a fuel subsidy, though not as high as the category one, and the retail price of petrol matches the price of crude oil on the world market but it's below the price of petrol in the United States. And the third category is the list of countries with price of petrol between the United States and the price of Bulgaria. And why Bulgaria? Because Bulgaria had the lowest petrol price among the EU 28 countries in 2019 as the time of the publication. And EU sets a minimum taxation amount, taking the cheapest in the EU sets a bar for categorization here. Also, you may ask why United States uh, as a separator for categories 1, 2 and 3. So the study here considers United States to be the international minimum benchmark as they are average cost covering retail prices. That is, they include the industry margin VAT and has 10 additional cents included towards development of the two road funds, at uh, one at the federal level and one at the state level. Finally, category four are the countries with a high taxation for petrol. The minimum of this category being Bulgaria, for the reasons we discussed earlier, most of the EU countries fall in this category. These countries use the revenue from taxation to improve the energy efficiency of the transport sector. The same is the case with diesel prices. They are also categorized into four categories. In the category three, instead of Bulgaria, the upper limit for diesel uh, here in, in, in this uh, section, Luxembourg was taken as Luxembourg is the cheapest in the EU 28 countries for diesel. The question we ask is, where is the money from the taxation going? In the United States case, it is evident that there is a 10 cent per liter going towards the two road funds, one at a federal level and one at a state level. 
So in the United States, the more fuel we fill, there is more money for roads and more roads mean more traffic. And so the vicious cycle of motorization is fed. Imagine if we were to divert half of that money for public transport improvement or towards road safety improvement efforts, which can include a spectrum of sustainable transport measures, then there is additional revenue for sustainable transport and a good case where the cars or motorized traffic actually fund sustainable travel. In the next video, we are going to talk about the various international options available for financing sustainable transport in our cities. That's all from me now in this video. See you soon. Bye.